Hey guys, welcome to Spotlight. My name is Derek. Today we're checking out the SIG Cross. Any of you who have been watching the channel do know that I love small precision rifles. And this is one of the smallest and most precisionist of the rifles on the market. Um, and it, it's been out for about two years now, so we're still gonna run right through it, tip the butt, and talk about it because this is one of the rifles that we really, really like here. To start, of course, muzzle, 5 8 by 24 threads. So really, I would say a suppressor would be a really good add-on to something like this. Muzzle brake would too, though it would be quite a bit loud and a little blasty. So for a hunting rifle, I would probably leave it either suppressed or nothing on it at all. Should you be using this as more of a range gun? Yeah, a break would be fine, but just mind the blast on that. Barrel is a match grade stainless steel. The 6.5 Creedmoor that I have here is gonna be on an 18 inch barrel with an eight twist. The 308 is gonna be on a 16 inch barrel with a 10 twist. And you'll get the whole rifle in either this, this nice black or their first light cipher camouflage. The handguard itself is free floated, of course, and is pretty well covered in M locks. So for something like this, you can put a whole manner of different accessories on it. Anything from rails for night vision and thermal, different bipods, Arca Swiss, lights, lasers, what have you. Plenty of, of uh, creativity there for you. Moving back, we have the barrel itself is actually attached to the receiver via an AR-15 style barrel extension. Um, quick note, these little cross things, they're just on here for display. You can take them right off. The rail itself is a 20 MOA and the rifle feeds from a box mag of the AICS variety, comes with a Magpul PMAG version of it. I will say, talking about the magazine and releasing the magazine, the release is right here. It's a bit stiff to do with the back of your finger, so personally I found just using the tip of your finger or even getting your thumb in there to do that would be good. Should you do that though, you wanna make sure you don't run the risk of accidentally hitting that trigger. Uh, that trigger is a match grade two stage. It has a really nice first stage, nice solid wall, and a, a really nice break. Moving up to the bolt, it is a very nice short 60 degree throw. Nice big old knob on it as well. It has a, a very strong three lug system in here. For the, the uh, 308 and 65 Creedmoor, it's a bit overbuilt, but don't forget they will be doing this in the 277 Fury, which is pretty high pressure. So this is built to take that. Moving back a little bit to the safety. It is ambidextrous and uh, it's pretty much bang on where you'd expect to find it for an AR. It has an AR style grip as well. You can change it out if you want to, but this is one of the few grips that I actually think feels rather nice. And that's whether you grip it in the more traditional manner like this, you can still activate that safety quite happily. But if you do thumb over like this, I like it for two reasons. That safety is a good indexing point for that. And also you can activate the or deactivate the safety with your thumb it's just right there ready to fire moving back we have a folding stock push button lift and turn locks over the bolt very nice and then to release it press that button and now she comes the bus stock itself i think is a really clever design because it has a lot of features in it that make the rifle a much better fit for you and it's really simple to use first is the butt pad height you can hit this button here it goes up and down a bit i really like this on precision rifles that way you can get it right in the pocket of your shoulder quite nice the cheek does adjust very easily as well kind of hit this little button here would use two hands here but you could do it with 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 one and then pull this lever down and then as you see it's a spring-loaded cheek height there so you'll find the place where you want it then just lock it in there and of course you have the length of pull, which you loosen with this knob here, figure out where you want it, and then put it in. When you mess with the length of pull, you'll find a minimum setting of around 12.6 inches and a max of around 14.6. And that combined with the other parts of the rifle that adjust is very nice because uh, even if you're the only one to use this thing, 
You'll want to set it up differently for the summer when you're not wearing as much clothing. And then in the winter when you're hunting, wearing a whole bunch of thick winter clothing and all that, you'll, you will want to adjust it to you. And also based off the position that you're shooting from, it is nice to kind of fine tune it here and there. Also, a lot of small rifles do make the mistake of not having sufficient real estate down here to use a rear bag when you shoot. So I do like that they put this here. So in the big picture, this rifle we've seen, as far as accuracy goes, we've seen a lot of people get half minute out of it. And it does take a good shooter and good ammo to do that because the rifle's so light, but it is certainly capable of it. And it is a very good sort of do it all rifle. I mean, uh, for close to sort of medium range hunting, I mean, it doesn't look like your traditional hunting rifle, yeah. But I mean, when it folds this small and the, and the 308 versions even shorter at about that long, I mean, this is really, really nice to move around in the woods with. You may not even need a rifle specific backpack to even pack this thing. As far as weight goes, the 6.5 Creedmoor with the 18 inch barrel is gonna come in at 6.4 pounds. The 308 with the 16 inch barrel, a little bit lighter at 6.2. And that's a pretty good weight for a hunting rifle for sure. It's right in there with a lot of the lightweight hunting rifles that we see on the market. And this one with the ergonomical advantage that it has that other rifles do not really, really makes this really popular for many types of hunting here in the US. And also if you wanna use it for predator control, I mean, if you're, if you're not really concerned about keeping the, uh, the pelt in good shape, uh, something like this 6.5 Creedmoor 308, uh, you can have your lights and lasers on that to really make that happen. Or just for casual long range shooting, 6.5 out of an 18 inch barrel is still a very strong thousand yard round. Um, <laughs> In fact, if I do get my hands on, on one of these that I can actually shoot, I do want to shoot a PRS match with it just to just to see how it does. Um, really looking forward to that 277 Fury round. We haven't really received much information on that and when that's going to be released. So we're just going to have to keep on hanging in there and it'll get here when it gets here. Uh, lastly, um, the recall on these, um, that was beginning of 2020, late 2019 thereabout. Uh, that had to do with the trigger. The rifle would fire, not when you pull the trigger, but a little bit after, sometimes on, on the release as well. That's all been sorted. We never actually got any of those guns. So our first shipment of crosses was after that had been fixed. So all the ones that we have will be ready to go. So the question is, who is this rifle for? And I think the answer to that question is pretty vast because even though it's i'd say on a hunting level it is really good for the types of hunts where you really need to do some stalking where you're not just sitting there with the rifle so things like pronghorn elk that sort of thing it is really nice and handy to be able to cart with you and be able to unfold the stock and be able to make a shot in a relatively short time frame also uh, just for Casual target shooters, something like this is very, very nice. Like I said, that 18 inch barrel on this, 16 on the 308, you're still getting at least a thousand yards on this, probably seven or 800 on the 16 inch 308 or uh, thereabouts. And it's very nice to use. It's a genuinely good rifle. So hunters, target shooters, and like I said, I do want to try this with a, on a PRS match just to see how it does. But I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can really deploy this rifle with good success. So that'll wrap up the Sig Sauer Cross Rifle. Uh, please comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. If you uh, make a good suggestion that we end up doing a video on, we'll definitely send you a swag pack. So definitely make sure that your YouTube account has your email in it so we can contact you for that. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. The, the more you do with that, the more stuff that we can do with these videos. Also find us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you next week.